Yep, there it is, September, moving into the last few weeks of summer. And of course, I am thinking a lot about the destruction in the wake of Hurricane Ida and looking at the power grid looks about the same. Maybe a few areas of Baton Rouge have been restored. Now, there's one great resource I want to pass on for you. This is Hurricane Ida Aerial Imagery. There's the link. And if you go to that, you'll get these aerial photos along most of the major highways, and you can zoom in and assess the damage for yourself. And there's a little bit of what it's showing out around Golden Meadows. Another resource is on my own website. There's the link for that, weathergraphics.com slash Hurricane Ida. And it's got some selected Sentinel-2 imagery. You can scroll through these and compare before and after to see some of the storm surge inundation in various areas. Here is the weather map for this first day of September. We've got the remains of Hurricane Ida moving through northern Virginia, just passing the Winchester, Washington, D.C. area, very heavy rain in Pennsylvania and parts of New England and New York. On the east side, some very cool temperatures with the cool advection from the Great Lakes, 68 degrees right there in southern West Virginia and 70s coming south from the Great Lakes. On the other side, we've got warm air advection, mid 80s and higher dew points destabilizing the atmosphere right there. So we're getting more vertical development and quite a few showers and thunderstorms. In the tropical region, the Gulf Coast area, yes, tropical air is in place and a very large complex of showers and storms extending from Houston to Tampa and Orlando. A lot of that is pretty heavy and unfortunately that is complicating the people trying to pick up the remains of their possessions, their property out there in Louisiana. Very, very sad to see that. Wish we could get some clearing down here. And we've also got the remains of Hurricane Nora. That's long gone. That moved up the Gulf of Mexico earlier this week. And the remains passed through Arizona. And now we find it up in the Four Corners area. Very cool conditions due to the evaporational cooling of that very dry, low-level air. So the air has pretty much cooled down to near its dew point, or at least near its wet bulb temperature. So we're seeing lots of lower to mid 60s in that area. Further to the north, that's that stagnant Pacific system moving just a little bit to the southeast over the past couple days. And out ahead of it, we've got this warm front lifting north through the Great Plains, the atmosphere probably a little bit too stable to support much convection through that region. There's our obligatory check of Alaska, Western Canada, and the Arctic. A little bit of snow coming down up there north of Resolute. Anyway, we've got this stationary front from Northwest Territories, Nunavut, into Alaska, and temperatures unseasonably cold in the Alaskan interior, lots of 40s and lower 50s. Down to the south, the Gulf of Alaska is active, got a 998 millibar low through that area in the spare clinic system extending south into the Pacific. So it's a little bit of a taste of fall coming, I guess you could call it. And out in Alberta and Saskatchewan, another early season bear clinic system now moving into Saskatchewan, but we've got this wraparound and destabilization of the air mass through that area. And a quick check out east. Mostly high pressure. That's a big old 10, 26 millibar high. And that's driving cold air south through Quebec and back around the backside of this low that is in central Quebec. So that's kind of a pipeline of cold air that's going to be coming south into the Great Lakes region and maybe the northeastern U.S. Are we expecting any records to be broken today? These are the official forecast highs from the weather service only 94 there at palm beach that's all we're seeing that could tie the record for the date and only a few areas in texas coming close to the record for the date but still within about four degrees below the record for today a few areas coming close to their 
lowest high temperature for today. In other words, these are afternoon highs that are unusually cold. 84 in Tucson forecast. That's coming pretty close to a record also in Florida with that extensive convection and also Poughkeepsie mired in that convective mess from the remains of Hurricane Ida and a few other areas here and there through California. Tomorrow morning looks like a few cold spots in the western U.S., 52 at Sacramento. That's not near a record. Also, Arcade of 48 and Seattle expecting 51. And for Friday morning, even colder in some parts of the eastern U.S. Remember, we were talking about that pipeline of cold air coming south from Quebec into the Great Lakes. Well, as that high settles over parts of the Appalachians, it's going to be pretty cool. 55 at Jackson, 52 at Parkersburg, and down around Montgomery and Gulfport, we're expecting mid-60s to near 70. None of that is going to break any records. And also, looks still cool up there in Northern California. And speaking of California, some major problems with fires in that region. This goes back all the way to Sunday. Some large smoke plumes moving into Idaho and Nevada. For Monday, you can see it started out kind of weak, and then they really started flaring up. You can see the pyrocumulus out there and some huge smoke plumes. Then going into Tuesday, still putting out smoke as the day goes on. Looks like they flared up a little bit. I could see a little bit of pyrocumulus developing. There's those hot spots at nighttime on the infrared imagery. Then we switch back to visible for today, and that's about where we're at right now. Looks a little bit better, but a lot of that smoke is ending up in the eastern U.S. So we'll check on the high-resolution rapid refresh smoke graphics. And there it is. You can see the extent of that smoke over the next 12 to 18 hours. So we're expecting probably more of that to flare up, and most of that smoke is going to be heading into the northern plains, but some of it will also get transported down into Kansas, Missouri, and as far as Arkansas, East Texas, and Louisiana. Speaking of Louisiana, we can check in on them, and unfortunately, we've got an active sea breeze pattern. Numerous cells all the way from New Orleans back towards Lake Charles and other clusters around the Houston area. And most of these are developing along the sea breeze that you see right here. Now, typically, a lot of the development is along the sea breeze, and you get dissipation back behind it. But it looks like we have enough residual moisture back behind the sea breeze to produce additional cells here and there. And it looks like another boundary taken off down to the south. So it's acting kind of like a large MCS. And that's how it looks on radar. Unfortunately, the devastated areas had a lot of cells go through about an hour ago, and then we're seeing a lot of the more active cells shift eastward where we're getting the strong heating in southwestern and south-central Louisiana. Well, let's see what other trouble we're dealing with. There's the remains of Ida, 30 miles an hour, 1,000 millibars. Kate is moving to the north, so we're not too worried about that. Let's check on, on that. Yeah, no problems with Kate. Larry, tropical storm, we've been expecting that for a few days. However, that appears to be recurving similarly to Kate and the other cell. What was that, Julian? So that's good news for the southeastern U.S., but of course we do have to keep a close eye on this entire region. Let's take a look at the five-day. Yeah, there is some little system that could come together off of Belize or in the Bay of Campeche. I think the GFS was indicating some sort of weak system right around here in the middle of next week. Let's see what's going on with that. Okay, so we're checking out this entire area right here, looking for tropical problems. Looks like we're mostly dominated by the subtropical ridge, trade winds, and easterlies affecting that region. You can see a few easterly waves progressing but no closed circulations. Well, there's Larry up there. We're not going to worry about that. But it does look kind of stormy in parts of the Gulf, the Western Gulf right there, around Wednesday next week. 
and it looks like something does consolidate off the Texas coast. This is definitely too early to call, but it's kind of in line with the idea of something forming off the coast of Texas in about one to 1.5 weeks. Could be a tropical depression, could be a hurricane, we just don't know. And we always want to double check, double check, double check, using the European model since it's a similar model to the GFS, but the dynamics and initialization, they're all a little bit different. So we could get different results. So looking at the tropical region, it is stormy in the Western Gulf, going out to 240 hours Saturday. Not really indicating much of anything. And I can see Larry grazing the right frame of the map. But that's not indicated to head into New England or the Northeast US, similar to the GFS. So at this time, it does not look like a problem for the East Coast. There are definitely a lot of advisories in the wake of Hurricane Ida. You can see some flash flood warnings in south central Pennsylvania and quite a few flash flood watches up and down the east coast from Maine all the way down to Virginia. Also got flash flood watches in effect for Arizona and Utah and as far as El Paso, Roswell and the Big Bend. Well, here's the best way to see the precept that's fallen. These are estimates from the NEXRAD radar network. You can see the heaviest amounts over the past seven days have been down around New Orleans out to Gulfport. Looks like over 15 inches have fallen there. If we want to verify that, we can go to the cooperative summary data. But this will give us kind of a look at things. And then extending up into Tennessee, Alabama, a lot of three to four inch amounts with some five to six. And you can see that plume just moving up the Appalachians into southern Pennsylvania. So why don't we take a look at our forecast for the next several days. Now there's our fronts. That uh, plume of moisture from Hurricane Ida moving up the coast and into New England. So that's going to bring some heavy rain to New York. Upstate New York. Springfield, Massachusetts, Boston, into tonight. And then finally, by tomorrow morning, it should be offshore and affecting mostly the Canadian Maritimes and far eastern Maine. So with that out of the picture, ridging coming into the Great Lakes and into the Ohio River Valley, bringing that cold air southward across much of that part of the country. On the other side, warm advection, moisture coming northward and feeding this MCS moving out of the western Dakotas. For tomorrow afternoon, some development along that boundary there in Kansas near Interstate 70. Got that tropical moisture flowing right up northward and looks like the sea breeze may be active once again in East Texas. We've still got that frontal boundary east-west through the Great Basin area that hasn't really gone anywhere. Slowly weakening and it's helping to serve as a nucleus for formation for these MCSs. This is Friday night. So that one will be moving through the Dakotas and Kansas. And we can see that boundary slowly sinking south into Oklahoma and Texas. And for Saturday, more development along the tail end of that boundary in West Texas and the Texas Panhandle. Some overnight MCSs in northern Oklahoma. And then for the weekend itself, looks pretty quiet. Some Gusty northwest winds in the Great Lakes area, some cooler weather with some of that cold air coming down. Then we enter a new week. That's evidence of a frontal boundary that's stalled out from Atlanta to Dallas. We're looking at the Gulf becoming active by at least Tuesday or Wednesday. Could see a tropical depression or a tropical storm forming in that region. And we've got that backdoor front in place from Oklahoma City to Louisiana, driven by this 1017 millibar high in Missouri. This is midweek next week. And then getting stormy there in the Gulf, that's gonna be the big wild card. And then elsewhere around the country, it looks like another shot of cold air coming into the Northern states for the 
11th and 12th. And then after that, that's getting pretty far out, so we'll go ahead and stop there. Anyway, I want to thank you all for watching. We'll be back again for the Friday video. Hope to see you there. And remember, you can help support the channel through Patreon. So stay tuned, and there will be a text overlay to show you how to do that. Hope you all have a great Wednesday evening. Take care, and we'll see you in a few days. Bye-bye.